truth will set you free. That necklace must be found, and at once. I know, Lila, but how? Apparently, they searched the place from stem to stern, even covered the grounds, just vanished into thin air. Thin air? I'll see you there, or at the judgment seat. So I don't know what we're going to do about Ukraine. I don't have the solution other than, um, you know, policy-wise, uh, we have to recognize that the green energy agenda is a threat to our national security. So to the degree we are more energy dependent, either here or in Europe on Russia, obviously that makes it harder to confront uh, Russia aggression. And the reason that we are more dependent on Russia energy is because especially in Europe, they've curtailed their own domestic energy production, uh, again, pursuing this extremist green agenda. Same here at home where the United States government is going to war against energy producers in a way that makes us more dependent on outside sources of energy as opposed uh, to the tremendous wealth of energy that we have here at home that can be exploited uh, by our own people. So we've got this corruption crisis that's metastasized into this international security crisis. Uh, and uh, you know we have to call it as we see it. But the media doesn't want to talk about it. They're, the Republicans don't even want to talk about it. The Judicial Watch is going to continue to investigate the Biden corruption with respect to Ukraine and Russia, and China, and everywhere else, the Biden family has leveraged Joe Biden's power, office, improperly for personal uh, financial advantage. And, and not just something that is distasteful, something that potentially is illegal uh, in terms of misuse of public office and hiding resources and monies that have come in because right now there's a criminal investigation of Hunter Biden into conduct that, according to publicly available evidence from his laptop and other witnesses, uh, implicates his father. And yet there's been no special counsel. So I tell you, if, if we had held accountable the Biden administration from the get-go, we might have had a different result. And if we had understood, and I mean we generally, because the media has been corrupted, but we, we, we must understand the impeachment of Donald Trump is as important to what's happening in Ukraine today as anything else. Because as I said, Trump knew what was going on and he wanted to stop it. And his punishment was, you can't expose Obama, Biden, Clinton corruption and Ukraine's role in that. It's so terrible, we have to impeach you over it and destroy you. That's how desperate they were. So uh, put that in your proverbial pipe, uh, pipe and smoke it as you consider the current crisis in Ukraine. Let's pray for the innocents who are losing their lives and those who are bravely defending themselves against this monstrous act of aggression by Putin. Uh, but let's not be naive that uh, uh, we put Ukraine in this position in part, and now the consequences are, are for Ukraine the reap, and as our corrupt political class uh, looks on with virtually no accountability, but from Judicial Watch. Glory to heroes. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, members of the Congress, ladies and gentlemen, Americans, friends, I'm proud to greet you from Ukraine, from our capital city of Kyiv a city that is under missile and airstrikes from Russian troops every day, but it doesn't give up. And we have not even thought about it for a second. Just like many other cities and communities in our beautiful country, which found themselves in the worst war since World War II. I have the honor to greet you on behalf of the Ukrainian people, brave and freedom-loving people who for eight years have been resisting the Russian aggression. Those who give their best sons and daughters to stop this full-scale Russian invasion. Right now, 
the destiny of our country is being decided. The destiny of our people, whether Ukrainians will be free, whether they will be able to preserve their democracy. Russia has attacked not just us, not just our land, not just our cities. It went on a brutal offensive against our values, basic human values. It threw tanks and planes against our freedom, against our right to live freely in our own country, choosing our own future against our desire for happiness, against our national dreams, just like the same dreams you have, you Americans, just like anyone else in the United States. I remember your national memorial in Rushmore, the faces of your prominent presidents, those who laid the foundation of the United States of America as it is today, democracy, independence, freedom, and care for everyone, for every person, for everyone who works diligently, who lives honestly, who respects the law. We in Ukraine want the same for our people. All that is normal part of your own life. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, Americans, in your great history, you have pages that would allow you to understand Ukrainians, understand us now, when you need it right now, when we need you right now. Remember Pearl Harbor, terrible morning of December 7, 1941, when your sky was black from the planes attacking you. Just remember it. Remember September the 11th. A terrible day in 20, 2001 when evil tried to turn your cities, independent territories in battlefields, when innocent people were attacked, attacked from air. Yes, just like no one else expected it. You could not stop it. Our country experience the same every day, right now, at this moment, every night, for three weeks now. Various Ukrainian cities, Odessa and Kharkiv, Chernihiv and Sumy, Zhytomyr and Lviv, Mariupol and Dnipro, Russia has turned the Ukrainian sky into a source of death for thousands of people. Russian troops, have already fired nearly 1,000 missiles at Ukraine, countless bombs. They use drones to kill us with precision. This is a terror that Europe has not seen, has not seen for 80 years, and we are asking for a reply, for an answer uh, to this uh, terror from the whole world. Is this a lot to ask for, to create a no-fly zone, zone over Ukraine to save people? Is this too much to ask? Humanitarian no-fly zone, something that Ukraine, uh, that Russia would not be able to terrorize our free cities. If this is too much to ask, we offer an alternative. You know what kind of defense systems we need, S-300 and other similar systems. You know how much depends on the battlefield, on the ability to use aircraft, powerful, strong air uh, aviation to protect our people, our freedom, our land, aircraft that can help Ukraine, help Europe. And you know that they exist and you have them, but they are on earth, not in, Ukraine, in the Ukrainian sky. They do not defend our people. I have a dream. These words are known to each of you today. I can say, I have a need. I need to protect uh, our sky. I need your decision, your help, which means exactly the same, the same you feel when you hear the words, I have a dream. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, Ukraine is grateful to the United States for its overwhelming support for everything that your government and your people have done for us, for weapons 
and ammunition for training, for finances, for leadership in the free world, which helps us to pressure the aggressor economically. I am grateful to President Biden for his personal involvement, for his sincere commitment to the defense of Ukraine and democracy all over the world. I am grateful to you for the resolution which recognizes all those who commit crimes against Ukraine, against the Ukrainian people as war criminals. However, now it is true in the darkest time for our country, for the whole Europe, I call on you to do more. New packages of sanctions are needed constantly, every week until the Russian military machine stops. Restrictions are needed for everyone on whom this unjust regime is based. We propose that the United States sanctions all politicians in the Russian Federation who remain in their offices and do not uh, uh, cut ties with those who are responsible for the aggression against Ukraine. From state Duma's members to the last official who has lack of morale to break the state terror. All Americans company must leave Russia from their market, leave their market immediately because it is flooded with our blood. Ladies and gentlemen, members of Congress, please take the lead. If you have companies in your districts who um, finance the Russian military machine leaving business in Russia, you should put pressure. I am asking to make sure that the Russians do not receive a single penny that they use to destroy people in Ukraine. The destruction of our country, the destruction of Europe. All American ports should be closed for uh, Russian goods. We are um, Peace is more important than income, and we have to defend this principle in the whole world. We already became part of the anti-war coalition, a big anti-war coalition that unites many countries, dozens of countries, those who reacted to, in principle, to President Putin's decision to invade our country. But we need to move on and do more. We need to create new tools to respond quickly and stop the war, the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine, which began on February 24th. And it would be fair if it ended in a day, in 24 hours, that evil would be punished immediately. To today, the world does not have such tools the war of the past have prompted our predecessors to create institutions that should protect us from war. But they unfortunately don't work. We see it, you see it. So we need new ones, new institutions, new alliances, and we offer them. We propose to create an association, U24, United for Peace, a union of responsible countries that have the strength and cons consciousness to stop conflicts immediately, provide all the necessary assistance in 24 hours, if necessary, even weapons, if necessary, sanctions, humanitarian support, political support, finances, everything you need to keep the peace and quickly save the world to save lives. In addition, such association, such union could provide assistance to those who are experiencing natural disasters, man-made disasters, who fell victims to humanitarian crisis or epidemics. Remember how difficult it was for the world to do the simplest thing, just to give vaccines, vaccines against COVID to save lives, to prevent new strains. The world spent months, years doing things like that much faster to make sure there are no human losses, no victims. Ladies and gentlemen, Americans, if such alliance would exist today, that is U24, we would be able to save thousands of lives in our country. In many countries of the world, those who need peace, those who suffer inhumane destruction. And in the end, to sum it up, today, 
Today, it's not enough to be the leader of the nation. Today, it takes to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Peace in your country doesn't depend anymore only on you and your people. It depends on those next to you, on those who are strong. Strong doesn't mean weak. Strong is brave and ready to fight for the life of his citizens and citizens of the world, for human rights, for freedom, for the right to live decently and to die when your time comes and not when it's wanted by someone else, by your neighbor. Today, the Ukrainian people are defending not only Ukraine, we are fighting for the values of Europe and the world, sacrificing our lives in the name of the future. That's why today the American people are helping not just Ukraine, but Europe and the world to keep the planet alive, to keep justice in history. Now I'm almost 45 years old. Today my age stopped when the hearts of more than 100 children stop beating. I see no sense in life if it cannot stop the death. And this is my main mission as the leader of my people, great Ukrainians. And as the leader of my nation, I am addressing the President Biden. You are the leader of the nation, of your great nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Thank you. Slava Ukraine.